In this video, I'm going to go over setting up your class dev box if you're a Mac OS X user, okay? Um, I've got, uh, the, the, the steps are pretty much the same whether you're Mac OS or Windows or Linux. I mean, you have to get these three different uh, software components. You have to get Git, which is a revision control system. You have to get VirtualBox and Vagrant, which are both um, software for managing um, uh, virtual machines basically and then you have to to do these uh, these two steps which use the software okay so um, I've got a few things I can show for Mac OS if you've never used like a command line from Mac OS you might need that or um, a few other things you know the, the only real differences between these and other operating systems is the you know the using the the, the package manager to install the software that kind of thing so uh, I've got a relative really recent um, installation of Mac OS. Let, let me bring up a terminal first here. So uh, real quickly, what I normally do for Mac, um, if you open up your Finder, which is really your file browser, um, and if you navigate over to Applications Utilities, uh, there should be a terminal there, and you can start it up by the usual way, by double-clicking. Um, I usually... Um, like to pin this to my dock, you know, so whatever they call it on Mac, keep it in my dock. So I, I usually, uh, once I get the first one started, I usually go over there and right click on that and uh, so, so I can bring up a terminal whenever we want. So, um, and um, as I, the, the, oh, the, um, before I, let's start with step one here. So let, let me bring back up. Um, these instructions here. So, you know, you, you need to find this repository. I should have given you the URL for this repository in um, our um, MyLeo Online, you know, to get you started here uh, right at the beginning of the course. So, if you go to github.com slash um, TMUC class slash COSC um, 2336 devbox, um, You'll, you'll be able to find it there. So, um, all right, so if that went past, there it is. So it's on GitHub, tmuc class slash cosc2336 dash devbox is the, is the URL for this, okay? So, um, you you might have get already installed um, it depends on whether you use developer tools or not um, so like I kind of showed down here um, on, on Mac OS I found even if you do a witch it might not really be there that might just be a stub until you install the uh, Xcode command line developer tools or something like that you can check so like I showed there you can try getting the version and, um, you know, if, if it says you've got the, an Apple Git version, you're fine. Um, if those aren't there, I mean, uh, it, it might pop up something saying that it needs to install, install the command line tools. And you can go and say yes to that and try and install them that way. And so that might work for you. Although I sometimes have some problems with that. Um, you might have to update to, um, uh, you might have to try to install Xcode instead. Or you might have to try and update um, to the most recent uh, version of um, the, the Mac OS instead of like 10.15 go up to Mac OS 11 okay uh, you can also try to install those those uh, command line tools by hand um, so you can try this as well you can do um, Xcode select dash dash install okay um, but uh, yeah so if you don't have those of course that's another way but, but that should give you the same thing as if you do like try to run like git dash version and it pops up and says it needs to install the command line tools. This is just doing the same thing but invoking it by hand. So if none of that works, um, kind of as, as I mentioned here, you could try the brew install um, the, the the brew package manager. Brews is good to have in any case. Um, so, but I think that the Brew Package Manager uses the command line tools as well. So, um, so you can get Brew uh, on your system by running this command here. You have to copy and paste this command here, not the dollar sign. So, one thing that you, if you haven't used a command line a lot, often when you see stuff like this, you're supposed to run in a terminal. 
uh, they'll put something that's meant to represent the prompt, so the percent, all the stuff before the percent, and the percent itself is my prompt for the command line, and the dollar is supposed to, so you don't type in the dollar, or you have to kind of identify what the prompt is and not type it in, but, but if you copy and paste the rest of this, that would get brew for you. Um, or, uh, I mean, if all that fails, I, I think you should be able to just always um, just directly install it. So, like I said, if you go to the get SCM downloads, um, oh, I didn't want to open up a new tab. I'm having some problems with my tabs here. Uh, open a new window. Um, um, it should give you... Um, uh, I might do I have the link wrong um, I better check that link in my readme so so yeah you want to go here so you can get the so you can select mac os um, so I, I, I'll check and make certain that link is correct so uh, so it doesn't go to the windows version for you so yeah if you, if you download for mac I believe it gives you like a standard um, Package so um, oh no I'm wrong so it just gives you some um, some um, instructions there so so yeah I already covered these you can try it from Brew um, but but both of those so I, if if again if, if you just get Xcode installed uh, but you know to do this you might have to open up your um, Apple ID um, and you know go to the um, App Store um, and search for Xcode so. Um, uh, there's there's a binary installer um, looks like option there that you can try as well so uh, but yeah you could try install Xcode first that should get you the tools so if you, if you can get Xcode in um, that'll get you the the command line tools or, or, or I think the, the the tools here would would install the command line tools for you as well um, let's try the installer here um, One of, the, one of these methods should work for you, um, of course. So it, it's nice if, if you do get the command line tools because there's other stuff that this gives you as well, including also you could use Brew. So, so, so if at all possible, you should try and get those command line tools um, set. So. Um, Uh, that's the repository. Um, uh, often on like SourceForge, uh, yeah, there it is. So this this is probably what I was looking for. So if you go to files um, on that one link, uh, this looks like a regular DMG, which is an installer for. Um, Um, you know, for, for Mac OS, okay. So I'm, I'm not gonna try that. So I do have it, but um, you know, if you have problems, you know, ask me or or, or you know, ask ask around. Um, but one of those methods should work. So it, usually, if you just get Xcode um, or the Xcode tools or the command line tools, then you're good to go. You can get the rest of the stuff installed. Okay. So you do have to have Git, um, and as I mentioned in the um, um, the description for this, you know, you should check that you can use it from the command line. So um, I already showed the Git version, so that's actually running Git and showing that I've got it installed there. So the next tool that we need is VirtualBox and then Vagrant. Um, VirtualBox um, again. I've got a link here. Let's check if that link is correct. Um, yeah, it goes to the top level, so you can select the OSX hosts to. Uh, um, download the um, correct package manager for OS X, so that just starts the download automatically. Um, and I think I'll pause here um, while I'm waiting for this download to complete. So let's see here on Mac OS, you can see the progress of your downloads by opening up your file browser and going to downloads, I believe. Yeah, so I'll take a little bit of time. So let me pause and we'll come back and, and show and show installing that.
Okay, um, so we finished downloading uh, VirtualBox here. Like I said, this should be a standard uh, Mac OS installer. So if you go to your downloads after it's done downloading and you double click on that, um, it should open up the installer for you to go ahead and, and get installed. Um, so again, I might pause here. We'll see. I haven't tried installing this before, so I'm not too certain how long it takes to uh, install everything here. Let's, let's see after it opens. So, um, yeah, from like I said, um, I'm not a real big Mac person, but whenever it opens up this for some reason, then you have to usually double click on the icon to actually do the installation. So, uh, so go ahead and continue, let it check. So, if usually for, for this one, you can accept all the defaults if it asks for anything, like, for example, the location. And then we'll go ahead and install it. Um, you have to enter in your SUD, your password of the user with the with the privileges for installing the software. And uh, like I said, I'm not certain how long this will take here. But after that's done, uh, VirtualBox is really it, it'll provide a GUI for you that, so that you can manage. Um, virtual machines that you're running, but we're using Vagrant, so you really shouldn't be using the GUI here. We need VirtualBox installed so that Vagrant can manage um, our uh, box using VirtualBox as a hypervisor, okay? So usually VirtualBox isn't meant to be run from, from the command line, um, but um, uh, we can try it out. and, and um, yeah, I think this might be our almost done here. So, um, so, so after this is done, kind of like I show here, um, uh, we can test um, uh, whether it installed or not by trying it from the command line. And we can also see if the GUI is there. So, um, so I suspect that we might want to go ahead and enable those extensions um, if you get the same message about um, this blocked these extensions here. So, um, so yeah, this the the Oracle Virtual Box might be blocked here. So let's um, let's go ahead and allow that. So yeah, I I um, clicked on that so I could get in here and change stuff. Um, and then oops, a second. Um, my machine has seemed to have frozen here. Um, let me pause for a second and check this. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, my system did uh, freeze there, so I'm not certain if that was related, but I did have to go ahead and allow the Oracle. And once once I do that, then um, I, I did get the stuff that I normally see. So, for example, um, if you go back and look at your command line uh, after you install uh, VirtualBox, um, the, the the command line tool, the, the name of the command line tool that's meant to be used by VirtualBox is called VBox Manage. So um, I guess it's in a slightly different location. I'll have to update that on the README to correct it. Uh, but since we've since we've got that, that means that uh, VirtualBox was installed correctly. So uh, case does matter from a Unix or Linux command line, so it's capital V, capital B, little O X, capital M there. So, but if, from your terminal, if you can run that, um, then you've probably got VirtualBox installed correctly, right? You should see version 6.1.22 or higher uh, if you're watching this video here. So, um, like I said, VirtualBox um, actually is a command line tool. So if um, if you um, 
go to your, like, not the App Store, sorry. Um, if you go to your Finder um, and look under your Applications, uh, I believe that's where it would normally s install it. Um, so, yeah, there it is. So, you know, but uh, you you probably, at least for this class, you probably shouldn't be using the uh, the GUI tool here. Let's see if it, if it runs here, right? So, although, you know, if you do bring this up while you're running your dev box, you will see it running on here. But um, um, you, should, you shouldn't be managing it from the command line tool. So, but you could use this for other virtual boxes and stuff if you want to get into that. So. Um, okay, so that, that's VirtualBox, um, and then the last tool you need is Vagrant. Um, I took, a, while I was having problems with, with VirtualBox, I already downloaded this, but, um, but yeah, you should be able to go to this link, um, and I believe that this site um, auto-detects kind of your operating system, so it takes you to Mac OS, um, if you click on it from a Mac OS, and you know, you'll want to get the 64-bit version. I believe you can you can install it from uh, Brew if you want to, too. So if you are if you try it, went the Homebrew route, um, you can probably inst install it using Homebrew with a Brew install, install command. Alright. Um, so again, um, I already downloaded this one, but it, it's a standard installer for Vagrant. So you should be able to double, double click on that and install it. Um, and then double click on the Vagrant package. And then you should be able to just accept all the defaults that it gives, um, including the location and things like that. So, uh, all right. Just go ahead and say install, and you'll need to give it your password. And again, I might pause here. I'm not certain how long this will take. Um, oh, there's a few things I can mention. So th there's a little bit of stuff in here about, you know, uh, making certain that you've got hardware virtualization enabled. But if you're using real Mac hardware, um, you shouldn't have to do this. So this is this is really for PC, Windows kinds of users. But but yeah, if you're using like Intel hardware running a Mac, you might have to to check your BIOS when you do that. So yeah, that that didn't take too long. So um, I'm going to move that to trash. The ins install package, and then that should be it. Um, and and you might have to reboot your operating system, like it says here. Um, so um, uh, I, I, you do have to reboot it for Windows. Um, it might be safe at this point, safer at this point to go ahead and reboot it um, after you inst even on Mac OS after you install Vagrant. But let's first check again. Um, so let's see. From th Vagrant is meant to be run from the command line, so we should find it on our path again. All right, and again it's in user local bin, so we need to update what you're going to see there. Um, and um, you should be able to run the Vagrant commands then, including like Vagrant version. Uh, by the way, that's two dashes in case you miss that. So it's Vagrant space dash dash version. Um, and you should get that you've got 2.2.16 or, or higher there on that. So, um, All right, so I'm going to go ahead and reboot my system um, and then come back. Right, so you should go ahead and reboot on your Mac OS if, if, um, to be safe at this point before we do the, our next steps to clone and actually set up your, your class dev box here. Okay, um, I'm back here. So I'm going to show you how to do this from the command line. Um, so the reason why we need to install git was so that we could actually do some git clone here um, of our repository that actually has the the development box that you need to be using for your class here. So um, you can get tools to run, you know, get uh, from command line or from from a GUI. And in fact, it, it, when you get your dev box installed, we're going to be using uh, Visual Studio Code, which has kind of built-in uh, abilities to use Git here. But but uh, the, the instructions here basically do things from the command line. Um, so I recommend you do this. So when you open up a new terminal, anytime you open up a new terminal, usually um, on an operating system like this, so, so if I open up like a new terminal window here, you start in what's known as your home directory. 
So I'm in um, users vagrant is my home directory. You know, there's, so there's some idea of what your current directory is and what your home directory is. So I suggest that you make a directory called repos uh, in your home directory. I mean, you, you could do that from your file browser. So um, if you go to, you know, your, your Mac OS finder and how do you create a new directory? Like, like right click for a new folder. You could keep, you could create your new folder here like that. Um, and you should see ls is a, uh, a way to list the files in your current directory. So I did ls-alh lists all files, basically, um, in, in a long format. So, so there's your repos right there. Uh, but in the instructions here, I, I mean, you can also create directories from the command line. So I'm going to remove it. So I, I removed it from the command line. And um, if you go back and look at your file finder, you should see it's gone. Uh, but um, I can also create a directory. Repos. So I usually, you know, I, I suggest that you do have a separate subdirectory where you put all Git repositories. Kind of that's why I normally do is repositories here. So now we see the repos there. Okay. Um, and um, once you have that, then um, you need to change into that directory. So there, there's from a command line terminal, there's an, there's some idea of what your current working directory is. So if you change directory into repos. And if I use PWD, which means print my working directory, I'm now actually in that directory, okay? And then, you know, now you can run this this clone command. So clone is really, you'll learn more about this in this class, um, but you can really think of it as just downloading the files from this repository at this point. So it downloads all the files to create your dev box. So I'm going to use, um, what is it, uh, super C to copy, super V to paste, just do a git clone. Um, what that will do, uh, it's going to create a, a new subdirectory called cosc 2336 deadbox. So, again, if I do a directory listing from here, I should see a new subdirectory. Uh, and again, you can go back to your file browser or your file finder and you can look at that and you'll see that there's a bunch of files in there. Okay. Um, including a vagrant file and some other stuff, all right? Um, okay, yeah, and that's it for cloning it. So then your last step, which, uh, again, I might have to stop and, and, and restart kind of to show this, um, but um, this the, the last step is going to actually provision, install, and create your development box, okay? So to do that, you first change directory into that subdirectory that was just created by the clone, so, so, so change directory into the... COSC 2336 dev box. So now that I'm in that directory, then you can perform the vagrant up. All right. And because of my environment, I'm going to have to probably stop and come back to this. So let me just describe this a little bit uh, and, I, and I will show you what it actually looks like. So this installs a bunch of stuff. This might take a little bit of time because it has to download a base box, which might be kind of big. The, the base box actually has a version of Ubuntu in it that's going to run um, in your virtual machine hypervisor in virtual box in this case and then once it gets to the base box it actually installs some more stuff it installs all of the software development tools in that in ubuntu environment that we need for the class so it installs vs code server and installs uh make tools and the gnu c plus plus compiler and some formatting tools and um, a bunch of other stuff that we need okay so um this should work for you, and, and the way I've got things set up, um, I don't think that this is going to work for me, um, so I'm going to probably pause and I'll come back and show you a real working version of this. So. Uh, but that's all you do, so Vagrant Up, um, and um, that will attempt to start the download and the provisioning of your system. All right. So, uh, well, so it is... It is doing stuff here. So maybe I'll let this run here. So this will take some time. So this is how it starts off though. So like I talked about, it's actually downloading um, what's known as the base box. This is just a box that already has Ubuntu, the basic Ubuntu operating system installed in it, right? Um, and this could take some time depending on kind of your download speed. So I'll pause there and I'll come back um, when we're done. Okay, um, so let me um, um, just uh, 
walk you through kind of the what happens here when you do your first vagrant up okay just make certain you understand what to expect here so um, I, I switched over to a different terminal hopefully that doesn't um, um, confuse you uh, I, I'm basically in you know I, I changed directory into the um, repository that we cloned like I showed you but before I jumped here um, we did I did my initial vagrant up so what you'll see is a bunch of messages come out um, you might not get color coding depending on you know what kind of a terminal you're using and, and, and what operating system you're running from okay but th this, this can take some time it actually has to um, um, it has to import this base box, so it actually has to download uh, a base box with an Ubuntu installation in it. So that might take some time, and after it does that, it actually also has to download and install a bunch of stuff, uh, including the development tools. Um, if you're using the Stev box for like um, uh, one of my software development classes or, or maybe other tools. Um, so anyway, you'll see it install stuff. I mean, you might even get some warnings and some errors. Uh, usually, uh, uh, these aren't problems, right? So I'll just scroll down here. So you'll see a lot of output. Um, I even had a few errors here, but but these normally aren't problems. Um, uh, if you get down to the end and you see that it says that the class dev box was successfully installed, you're probably okay. Um, uh, if you have problems with this, I mean, it's, it's not really, you can always just redo this. So the easy way to redo this is if you, if you just completely delete this directory, however you normally delete a directory from your system, and then just redo the step um, four and five to, to clone the repository again and, and try the Vagrant up again. So, so if it, you can sometimes have a hiccup downloading stuff. So, so you can always try to reinstall it yourself if, if you think you had some issues. All right. Um, so when you do this, um, what is actually happening? So for this particular class, um, uh, we're running a Visual Studio um, code server. So it actually runs Visual Studio, but in a uh, uh, in a HTTP uh, web server mode. Okay. So um, 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 so so so. To check whether this successfully installed or not, so, so I'm going to kind of move on to the last step here. So I, I won't show you everything here. That I'll leave this for later videos about how to really use your dev box. Um, you know, especially this this might be class specific, so you might not have Visual Studio Code. So in this case, uh, the the example I'm showing you actually sets up a, a web server, which should be running on your local machine. Okay, so. Um, Again, if, if I scroll all the way back up to the top here, you, you might miss this, but basically what it's doing is um, it's forwarding um, to um, a port number uh, 8080, the, the, the web server that's running inside of the dev box here. So you can uh, just connect to that, and, and um, for this particular class, I had that um, kind of at the end here. Um, so basically, you want to open up um, a web browser um, and, and try it on your local machine. So 127.0.0.1 is your local machine, uh, and then this particular server should be running on 8080 for this dev box. Okay, so you should be able to just click on that, um, or you know, just open that up. So 127.0.0.1, that 8080. So if, if you're running a Visual Studio Code uh, web-based server, um, that's what you should get. So if, if, if you direct to that address, um, it should start up the Visual Studio Code server for you. Okay. So again, if you're in a different class, you might be doing, using some other kind of a server, like Jupyter Hub server or something else. right? But, um, um, but yeah, that's what you'll see for this, for my COS C2336 uh, data structures and algorithms class. You'll be running the Visual Studio Code server here like this. All right. Um, so, um, so again, let, let me warn you, you know, you shouldn't be, um, if you're using the Visual Studio Code um, or if you're using a dev box, uh, we are using VirtualBox, but you shouldn't be using the VirtualBox GUI. I already mentioned that in this particular video. So, so whenever you're done working with your DevBox, um, the, the correct way to shut it down is to go back 
to open up a terminal and, and, and change into that directory and use a, a vagrant um, halt, okay? So, um, um, again, let, let me just show you that. So, so I'll open up a, a new terminal here. So for me, so, so again, normally, you know, your, your terminal might look a little bit different from here, but normally when you open up a terminal, it starts in your home directory, which is where I'm right here. So, so like I showed you, to get back, when you open up a new terminal, you always have to change into that directory where you cloned um, your repository down into. So, so for me, I, clone, I, I created a repo subdirectory, um, and in this directory is where I actually did the git clone, so I have to change back into that directory, the COSC2336 dev box. Now from here, this is where Vagrant is actually running. So if I want to, I can do a Vagrant halt. This will cleanly shut it down, all right? Vagrant halt. And you should see some messages here. And, and I also kind of wanted to show bringing this back up again, so restarting it, right? Um, so that should be fine. So and, and um, um, so when it's, when it's halted, you shouldn't be able to, um, sorry, you shouldn't be able to, um, open up the server again. So, so if you try and go back to that, uh, in this case, the the port 8080 that we were uh, running the, the VS Code server on, uh, there's nothing there if, you're, you know, if your uh, dev box isn't running, right? So again, uh, to run your dev box, you need to change that directory and use the vagrant up command again. But um, it should be a lot faster after the first time you do it because it doesn't have to reinstall everything. It'll just bring it back up, all right? So here I can talk a little bit about these. So, so here, one message you should see is this this forwarding port, port 8080 from your dev box, which is the guest, to your host machine, okay? So so that's how you can open up a web browser and, and, and go to 127.001.8080 to get whatever server is running in your dev box, all right? Another thing I wanted to point out here, so, so I'll show this as kind of the last thing, to how to access files, okay? So normally when you're running a dev box, um, it makes a, um, it, it mounts a shared folder from your host to your guest, okay? Um, so first of all, again, let, let, let's check again. So, um, so from here, um, if I try and reload that again with my dev box running, I should be able to bring up my Visual Studio Code um, dev box, okay? And, and in a later video, I'll show you how to use Visual Studio Code or whatever server you're using in your dev box for the class here, all right? But it is running again. Uh, the other quick thing I'll show here is that normally it, it um, we're gonna mount a shared folder. So if you need to get access to files that you're creating inside of your dev box, you'll wanna learn how to be able to do that as well. So for me, it, it mounts, um, there's a directory uh, here um, inside of the repos COSC2336 dev box um, called um, assign. Well, actually, it's just mounting that whole directory. Okay, so if, if I if I create a file, um, I'll just go ahead and edit a file. So I'll just do I'll just open a new file here. Um, And I'll just edit and I'll save it. So I'll give it a name, um, Home Vagrant. Uh, I need to, to save it um, into the correct place. So in, in this uh, setup, I need to save it into my sync, uh, so into my sync assignment, and I'll call it test.text, okay? So that actually created a new file inside of my server here. So if you look, uh, I can do this from the command line. So if, if I look into my um, assignment directory, um, there's an, a test.txt, right? Right, and and um, I can I can display um, those um, um, files if I want to. I, I can display the content of the files, okay? So, so anyway, and, and if this makes more sense, you can also um, get this from a file browser. So let me bring up a, a file browser here real quickly. Um, uh, 
oh, sorry, um, There we go. Sorry about that. I had to open up a new file browser here. So again, again, your file browser might look different depending on your operating system, but if I go to my, my home directory, go to my repos, um, and, and go to that subdirectory where you did your git clone, you'll see your files. These are all on my host machine. Uh, but, but that file that I just created um, in my server was saved um, to a particular location to sync assignment. And that folder is shared on my host machine with the assignment subdirectory. So there, now we see that test.txt, um, and I can open that with um, like an editor, for example, um, and, and we'll see the content. You know, this is a test, all right? So, you know, again, the, you, should, you should kind of figure that out. So normally, you know, again, your dev box will have some way, the, a shared folder that's being shared from your host machine to your guest machine. So in, in, in this particular example, that folder, that, that folder sync assignment is being shared um, with my host machine to a folder called assignment under the subdirectory where, where we get cloned that, okay? So that would be an easy way that you can get files um, from inside of your dev box back to your host machine if, if, you need, if you need them, for example, to submit for assignments or for whatever reason, all right? So that's basically, so there's a lot more that you'll be able to do with your server that's running on your dev box, depending on what type of server. I'll leave those for other videos, but that's the basics, all right? So, so to, um, um, to kind of emphasize on that again, so make certain that you're cleanly starting and shutting, it, uh, shutting down your dev box from the command line. So, so again, if I'm done using this dev box, I want to do a vagrant halt to, to actually shut it down. Um, and, and learn how to access it, uh, however you access your server. So often, if it's a web-based server, you'll just go to a port number on your local machine to access the server um, and learn how to access your local files, um, uh, the, 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 the shared files between your dev box and your host machine, all right? All right, so that's basically it for this video. Um, there's a bunch of other additional um, uh, links. Uh, you should find the, these, hopefully, um, at the bottom of that README, um, uh, you should also find these, these same links here, uh, but I'll leave that up here on the video. Um, so some links if you're interested in you know, virtualization in general or Oracle VirtualBox or Vagrant, you might want to look up the docs for those. Um, if you're in this, my data structures and algorithms class, you'll be learning a little bit about Git, but you might want to do the Git tutorial um, or look at the Git user's manual. Um, um, and if you're using the Visual Studio Code server, you might want to, you know, find the documentation for Visual Studio Code um, if you need more specific details about using, using Visual Studio Code. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, I will see you guys then in um, um, other videos for this class, okay? So have a good day.